Hi, this is Paul Francis and welcome to the very next video to the Caesar Review course. Basically, we will be talking about how to pass the exam successfully. Um, yeah, I hope you learned something about it. So let's get to it. Uh, to start, let's talk about the exam. Actually, I've talked about this in the prior video, but let's talk about it again so that there will be given emphasis to it because it's it has in important information that you need to know in order to pass the exam. So the actual exam has 150 multiple choice questions with four choices, four difficult choices. And this, um, most often than not, these four choices are actually all correct, but you have to look for the best answer among those choices. So you have four hours or 240 minutes to complete. So basically that's one hour and 30 minutes or something like that uh, to complete one question. And I believe you, have, you will have enough time to finish it. Uh, I finished the first uh, pass. Uh, basically taking all 150 questions, uh, answering them first. Uh, on the first try, I took about an hour and 30 minutes for that one. And then I reviewed them again. And after two hours, uh, I think three hours, I was able to complete the exam. So you, I think you will have enough time to actually answer those ones. Uh, Isaka uses a report scores on a common scale of from 200 to 800. So um, there are actually different weights on ex uh, on the exams questions, I believe, and there are actually uh, some uh, practice questions or research questions there that are not actually included on the total like, total score. Uh, they are just there to actually uh, uh, to gauge if that question is actually questionable on an exam. And you need actually to 450 or higher to pass the exam, so that's about 56 to 7 percent. And but actually, if there's a different weighing scale, uh, a different weight on every question, so um, as a rule of thumb on your practice exam, I believe you need to target 85 percent to actually give you more enough confidence that you will pass the exam. So after taking the exam, you will actually see a preliminary result saying if you preliminary pass or you preliminary fail. I, I'm not sure if those uh, results can change. I have been searching online before uh, when I first took the CISA exam because I only get a preliminary pass. I research online if anyone uh, received that and then uh, get an official fail score after. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's currently happened. So. Uh, I think they were just uh, doing that to weigh, uh, to get their actual score because of those scales. And then official score, you will be emailed within 10 days. Actually, now you can check your my ISACA uh, for the results as well. But uh, yeah, I, it's actually exactly 10 days for me for all the three exams. So yeah, 10 days. Not within, it's in the 10th day. <laughs> it's, so if you fail, uh, you will be given 30 days to rest first before you can register again and pay again if you uh, want to take the exam back. So more information on this, you can actually download a PDF file on the ISACA website, the Certification Exams Candidate Guide. So there, are, you actually have to, you need to read that one because it, it contains a lot of information that you uh, that will actually help you pass the exam. Maybe not on the knowledge side, but on the and not on the CISA material side, but on the on the specific guidelines that you would need. And so also, if you want to learn more about the CISA exam course, of course, you have to read that uh, PDF file, which is a quick read. Book. So, yeah. so here are the materials I use for my review for the CISA exam, which are which I think actually help me pass the exams. So first and foremost will be the cyber videos. You can actually watch a CISA course there for free as well although old it, it still proved very useful to me at the first try but of course now that I'm doing one you can also use this one as it will be more updated and library will be free I think you can have access to it for free and the other thing is this study guide created by Ondaya uh, for, uh, it's a blog basically but it's great uh, written into a blog I believe it's, it was updated 2015 or something basically putting more technical stuff there that he wrote basically his notes and i actually use those as well uh just thinking uh, just going through those things and and checking which ones i don't know yet so that's 
very important as well. And the most important thing that you need to have is a CISA review question and answers and explanation statement. If you're going to buy any material or any uh, review material for the CISA exam, this would be the one. I believe this costs around one two hundred dollars or something, one hundred fifty or two hundred dollars for the for a twelve month access to this. It's very important. You don't you ever need any other material other than this one because this that's what I did basically. Yeah. So here's the actual things I did for me to pass the exam successfully. So as you know, I passed the exams with a 693 score, and it is the highest for the February to May 2018 batch here in Isaka, Manila. So uh, first, I have this very old review, uh, CISA review manual, which is a 2013 version, I think, and I tried reading it, but I was not able to move past uh, chapter one <laughs> because it's very dry and I just can't take any information from it uh, and I con constantly drift over every time I read it so so from there I took the Isaka self-assessment exam which you have there on the link there uh, to actually gauge on where what you actually know and what you don't know and so that you will have um, an idea on how they are questioning uh, uh, the CISA exam. So with this self-assessment exam, I think I only about, I got about 30 correct answers from the possible 50. So that's 60%. So basically I failed um, because uh, from browsing around, you need to have, to actually have um, a six, uh, an 85% score for your practice exam to build enough confidence for you to take the exam. And also I have this uh, questions, question answers and explanations database, which is very, very important. So what I did with this one is because I need, I, I believe they have a, about 1,100 questions in there. So I make it a point that I have to finish all of the, all of those questions instead. And then I would just uh, do the cyber reviews along the line. And what I did, so to schedule is I do 40 questions for the weekdays every day, 40 questions. And when, and I have to top it up with uh, 100 questions every Saturday. So I do, I did that for about one, one month and a half. And I was able to finish everything up. Uh, at first, my uh, results from those, for, uh, for those taking those tests is about, it's still failing about 60 to 70 percent still still not going there so so i think there's a problem with that one so i have to uh ramp it up as well so i do also a 200 question practice exam every other week to 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 com to augment that uh, review process so it's very important that for every question you actually get into the uh choices as well you need to justify everything why is A correct? Why is B, C, D incorrect? So you need to need to know how to explain all those things. You just you just cannot memorize the answers because those questions that are showing up on the database will not show the same way in on the exam. I I took three exams for Isaka. I never seen a duplicate question from the database to come into the actual exam itself. So that's very important. So what what we what we are trying to do here is actually getting ourselves ready for how um, Isaka is thinking. So you need to know that all the four choices could be correct, could be correct, but there should be a perfect or the best answer for that one. So yeah. So here are the important uh, five things that you need to to know to take by heart before you take the exam and. First one is to think the Isaka way. Uh, as I've been talking earlier, um, as we go along answering the uh, questions, answers, and explanations database, you will see how, what, which which parts are important for Isaka. Which um, because uh, basically uh, we have many experiences in IT and things like that, which are not actually how Isaka is doing things. So we need to understand that. What we've learned before that are not that are not related to any Isaac frameworks, uh, they could not be what 
uh, they could not be the same uh, or true to the Isaac questions. So the number, uh, the second one is the cost-benefit analysis. You, this thing actually is showing on all the exams, basically on all the three exams I took, and this one is very particular with that one that you need to remember that uh, you will have to think as a manager, basically, because there should be a cost-benefit analysis on applying to every question. So if, as you know, this is big business related, so we don't want them to be spending 1 million pesos on uh, safeguarding a marketing flyer, things like that. So uh, you need to understand if, uh, which, uh, you need to just apply security on a just enough basis. And for those ad actually disaster recovery and business continuity, the third one uh, that is important here on the list is human safety is the top priority. Whenever you see a, a choice about um, on the questions on the exam that talks about human, uh, that there's a choice for you in the human to be the first one to go out, uh, most most often than uh, more often than not, that will be the answer to that question because in Isaga, human safety is the priority. Not even your data, not even your uh, physical systems. You have to prioritize human safety first. And also, the fourth one will be governance and management commitment. As we all know, Isaga is um, uh, more into governance. So we you have to understand that for everything that or planning and things that we do, you need to get management commitment first so that you can actually get a smooth sailing uh, of the project or the planning. And you need to understand that first. And also, you need to, the last thing you need to relax 24 hours before the actual exam to make you don't have too much uh, tension or nerves when taking the exam to relax. What, I, what we did is we, we always check into a nice hotel and really uh, play with my family and we just relax with my family before the exam. So that really helps me a lot because I have, I have a clear mind when I go to the exam day. So. And that's it and good luck so yeah thank you for joining me for that one that concludes our second video for uh, the CISA review course on how to pass the exam hopefully to see you on the next video which will be going to talk about the domain one information system auditing process already so basically we are now actually on the review course so slides you can see them on my website you can see the on the description below and please don't forget to subscribe subscribe so that we can actually reach more people and to spread the word on this review course so that they won't don't have to spend spend too many on those things yet. Subscribe so that you get notified on the next video as well. So yeah, see you on the next one. Bye.